Hey folks, this is Ardwolf, and welcome to another episode of Ardwolf Presents. I am coming to you from Vanguard Saga of Heroes, the now free-to-play Vanguard. And as you can see, there's quite a few people around. I am on the Talon server, which is has in recent years been a much more populated server for Vanguard. There is one other server that is an EU server that uh, basically nobody played on before the transition to free-to-play. Uh, I understand it is more populated now, but anyone coming into Vanguard, my recommendation is that unless you find uh, the, uh, the ping issues on the EU server uh, to be so preferable that you'd rather play on a less populated server that you should play on Talon. So I'm playing on my free account at the moment, and you can see somebody's just like zoned in and is hovering in the air. That does happen occasionally. Um, we're playing on my free account, and I'm going to show you uh, actual gameplay on the Isle of Dawn. This is one of uh, Vanguard's four currently available starting areas. Um, there are actually some other starting areas that are still in the game, but you can't actually start there anymore. That's something I might talk about at some point. Uh, but there's now one starting area on each continent, depending on your race, and anybody can choose to start on the Isle of Dawn, which gives you kind of a concentrated level 1 to 10 experience uh, in all three spheres, adventuring, crafting, and diplomacy. So we're going to get started on that, and what we're going to do, f end up doing first here is leveling to about level 4 here in the initial quest hub, which is Ten Trees Village. And I've done, come in and I've done nothing except to activate a couple of abilities, um, and push a couple things around on the hotbars. As a Kaliathari Blood Mage, which uh, is a free race, but a class that is limited to level 20 for free players. Um, I have here uh, this ability, Bursting Cyst, which is basically my only attack at the moment. Uh, I have my Racial Ability, uh, Protection of the Sands, which gives me a, a 10 second bubble uh, against damage. I have a Sprint Ability that everybody gets. And I have a heal, Infuse Health, uh, which gives me um, some health and more per level of Blood Union, which is something that we will get to talking about on this character. And I do have one buff, which is Health Graft, which gives me basically uh, extra health for an hour. Uh, and I just activated that. So this is the initial quest giver right here. We're going to talk to this guy. And if you don't know already, we're going to activate him by right-clicking on him. And this gives me a quest here. My character's name is Uktar, just because I could get, come up with anything more awesome. So this tells me to uh, locate Kiri Ten Trees, and uh, again, I'm going to approach this as kind of a let's play, and we're going to talk about all the very basics of navigation and the UI and all that other stuff. Uh, this will probably stretch to more than one video. We will see how far I get with it. Up at the top of the screen, uh, right uh, below the annoying become a member box that you cannot move, uh, or turn off. If you could turn it off, that would be great. I'd be satisfied for being able to move it down here, but on free accounts this thing shows up and it's I think it's kind of annoying, especially since you can't move it. If I could push it off to a corner, I wouldn't mind it so much. And of course over here we have the station uh, marketplace that you can go in and buy stuff in. Let's take a quick look at that. Um, yep, no actual new items here. Uh, can I claim? Nope. As a free account, I don't think I can. Uh, on my actual paid account, uh, which is a station access account right now. There's like a free uh, welcome bundle available that's got some potions in it and stuff. Um, so we'll ignore that for now and we'll go take a look again at the compass. Um, this just shows me my direction. You can see that there's a minimap too. I believe you can disable the minimap if you're so inclined. Another thing that you can also do is by hitting the N button, you can turn names off of everybody except your current target. Um, uh, for the purposes of this demo, I'll probably keep them on, but I kind of like to play Vanguard with them off. Uh, I think it makes the world feel more immersive. Um, so the current quest objective, if we pull up our quest log by hitting L, um, we can click or unclick uh, one of the given locations in the quest. And not all quests have these. Sometimes you'll actually have to go find the objective or the original quest giver or whatever. But in this case I can click on it and it gives me a red line across my uh, across my compass that tells me the direction that the objective is. In this case it's this chick down here. So we can go talk to them. We can see that uh, this is Ten Trees Farmstead. It's one of about three quest hubs here on the Isle of Dawn. 
and I've completed that objective. And the shield above her head. The shield, by the way, means that it is an adventuring quest. That quest. There are different icons for the different spheres. Although there's no there's a, there's quests for harvesting, which is kind of a sphere, um, but uh, there's no special icon for it, and it doesn't have levels. You just have a skill. We'll get to that uh, shortly as well. So we'll right click on her, finish this quest, and she'll give me another one. Um, I do recommend you actually go through the dialogues. Uh, in, in many cases in Vanguard, you can get additional quests, um, and the game's got really good lore, and I actually got an objective complete for having listened to her dialogue. So we'll complete that quest, and then we will go find the other guy. She has given me a letter to take, and I can, I can pull up my inventory by clicking B, or all my inventory bags by clicking Shift B, but I only have the one bag at the moment. We'll get to the bag limits and restrictions and see exactly how that plays out shortly. Um, so we're looking for... Performance is pretty good here, um, despite the fact that I'm filming and the fact that there's a shit ton of other players around here at the moment. And these, these are all, like, level 4 or under players in all likelihood. Level 2, level 2... Um, you can't advance past level 10 on the Isle of Dawn, as far as I know. Although that's something else I kind of want to fool with to see exactly how it works. If you stop at level 10, uh, which that might not be the case anymore. There's no real reason to have that restriction in place now that uh, Vanguard is free to play anyway. So we'll turn this in. He's going to give me another quest. Another reason, and he'll give me a, a second quest on top of that. Another reason to play with the names off is I think it makes the, the quest icon, the quest giver icons a little easier to read. So in this case, we'll close our inventory here, and we have our quest objectives in the tracker up here. Um, we have to kill these podlings. Since I only have one offensive ability anyway. These guys probably won't actually drop anything, would be my guess. Um, the other th uh, quest that I have here is to collect these seeds, and you can see the little sparkles above uh, the, the quest objectives for that. I can't recall off the top of my head if there's an auto-loot function in Vanguard or not. If there is, I have never personally turned it on. You can definitely change where the uh, where the pop-up appears. And even with all these people around, there's still there's still really plenty of these. Each uh, each of these little plants gives you two of the drops. So. It doesn't take all that long. This should kick me to level two right here. No, not quite actually. Hidden quests are also something that uh, Vanguard has a, a fair number of that you have to actually make some effort to go and and run down. And I know there's some on the Isle of Dawn. The uh, these are the uh, the pop-ups that you get as like little tutorial hints. I turned these off, but apparently it decided that. Uh, and now my objective on the quest has gone back to the the quest giver, that which again sometimes happens and sometimes it doesn't. Um, it it pretty much always does in uh, on the Isle of Dawn. The trouble I've always felt with the Isle of Dawn, and we'll get to that uh, tutorial hint in a moment, is that uh, it's kind of its own, if you pull up the map, it's kind of limited to this particular grid square here. These are called chunks in Vanguard, and they basically represent zones, and they're, they're pretty big. So this whole area is, is pretty big, but you can't exit it. You can't like go out to the other continents until you've finished a, a, to a certain point here on the Isle of Dawn. And so it can kind of give you a much more hemmed-in feeling. 
and because the quests are up to level 10 on the island are kind of, you know, direct to do this, then do this, then do this. And you have some ability with between the different spheres to vary that. Um, it can feel much more linear than the rest of the game does. I think it doesn't give you necessarily a great feeling for um, how the rest of the game plays. Uh, but on the other hand, the quest progression is, is a lot better than it was in some of the racial starter areas that we used to have. So let's turn these in, first of all. And we get a we get an item. We'll take a look at that in a second. We get a new quest, and now we'll take a look at this tutorial. I turn the hints off because I don't need them, uh, but we also have uh, for for this particular tutorial hint. This is a, the one of the Blood Mage's special things. He's got an ability called Blood Union, which basically stacks on an opponent. And the longer you fight with them, and then you can burn that to do stuff. So they're basically like finishing moves, but this is this guy's pretty much a straight caster type guy. So we'll get rid of that. We don't actually have the ability yet, but uh, we have the Go Train quest. So we're going to do that, and that will result in us getting the ability. What do we have for stuff? Just this thing. Now this... Uh, this quest icon, yellow means that he's got a quest for me, is for crafting quests. So we're going to take that too. But we're not actually going to pursue that in the context of this video. Maybe in the next video we'll get to crafting. Okay, so we're going to complete the quest. And he's got a item for me too, which is a staff, which is quite a lot better than the one I'm using. And we'll take the quest to go back to the other guy. I'm kind of taking my time going through these, and I do have a couple of things here. A ranged attack ability, which is not terribly useful for this character. Uh, so we'll take that and throw it over here since we don't really need it. And we're level 2 at this point. You do get new abilities about every other level in Vanguard, at least up to about level 30. And I, I think that actually holds up all the way up to the progression to level 55. Not this guy has another quest for me. Now, this thing right here is a civic diplomacy parley, and that's something that we'll also get into in this particular series of videos, uh, but not this particular video. I want to get us out of a level... Um, uh, of the level 1 to 4 area and uh, then probably switch to the same character on a different account. And let's see what we have here. This quest, then I'll probably switch to a, a new, a, a different character that's basically the same character who's also level 4 on the Isle of Dawn and play with him because he's the character I'll keep. So, um, pulling up uh, my stuff here, I can totally equip that. That's a lot better than this junk-ass thing right here. Um, this is uh, arms armor, which won't cover up the robe, by the way. And then this Gitaro repellent, which we need to use for the quest. So we need to slay marsh dwellers, drive mature Gitaro back, and then turn in the Gitaro repellent to the guy at the end. So we'll do that. And what's this ability here? Uh, steals health from the opponent and returns it to me. That's pretty nice. And I got that ability at level 2. And they've kind of streamlined this, too, and we need to get these tools, too, which, if I'm not mistaken, are here. Maybe so. Oh, that's them. Locked chest. So what this is, is a skeleton key, and this is one of the things that the keys that you buy in the marketplace uh, unlock. Let's take a look at that. Find that item. Skeleton key costs 200 points. They gave me 199 station cash for free, of course. So I couldn't even unlock this one thing. But I got the one quest, so let's go do the other one. Turn the objective on just for the sake of doing so. You can, of course, tab target in this game. And you can see my blood union right here. Um... These are not... Ah, it actually, that's new. You actually gave me a, uh, it actually gave me a message that I'm not supposed to kill those guys. 
that I have to instead use this repellent on them. So I dragged it to my hotbar so I can activate it easily. And those marsh dwellers in the background are the guys I actually have to kill. Actual loot drops here on these guys. Okay, one more. I want to give you a uh, sense of how Vanguard actually plays. I've done a lot of talking in multiple videos about uh, the different features and why Vanguard is worth looking at, uh, but I haven't really provided much of a sense at all of actual gameplay, so that's kind of my goal for this. Uh, what, I, what I hope will be a series of videos coming out over the next week or so. Need more Marsh Dwellers. back there. I believe I've just mentioned that you can tab target, which is how I will normally target in Vanguard. The targeting box is kind of big compared to the size of the model, so if you're trying to target with the mouse in like a big cluster of, of people fighting and stuff, it can be kind of a pain in the ass. around looking for more marsh dwellers. And somebody just nabbed that guy, but that's okay, there's another guy here. This particular tree stump appears to not be blocking my line of sight. I'm gonna pull up uh, the, the hit the K button actually turns my personal torch on, which can be handy. If I hit P I get my abilities. So what I want to look and see here is if I actually have an auto attack. I do. It wasn't on my hot bar when I started. No reason I shouldn't. I'm pretty sure everybody gets one. So we'll put that on there. It's not something we'll probably need in the long run, but uh, it'll be helpful now. Rather than having to drop mana on a spell. Need one more Marsh Dweller. Never actually had this problem here before, and I've been through this... Uh, starting area many, many times where I have to actually take a moment to hunt down a mob. It's kind of set up with it in, in mind. These things respawn very quickly and so the whole thing's pretty much set up with uh, the idea that there'll be a decent number of players in here. Isle of Dawn launched sometime after the launch of the game as kind of a, uh, a refined starting experience to give players the ability to uh, kind of get a polished starting experience, which wasn't possible in all of the original racial starter areas. Some of which I really liked, personally, but, uh, you know, they, they weren't all equally good, that's for sure. And there were a lot of them. Not every race had its own starter area, but a lot of them did. And there's a, as, as you saw in, I hope, the last video, which I certainly hope you've watched, there's a, a lot of races in Vanguard. I think there's 19 races, something like that, 15 classes to play. And a lot of those classes are quite distinct as MMO classes go. A number of them have very unique mechanics, uh, one of which is the Blood Mage, um, which is not the world's most unique feeling class until you get up to around level 10 plus. And then it really starts to shine. Uh, some of the other classes with neat, unique mechanics, uh, it becomes obvious that they have, hey, this is awesome type mechanics a little earlier, like the Bard, for example. But they don't really start to shine up until after uh, level 10 either. The, the game really comes together at, at around level 10. Okay, so we got some rings here. I believe uh, vitality is going to be most important for this character. So we're going to equip these things. We got some uh, wrist stuff, and we got a ring, and we got some junk that we can get rid of. Let's do that. 
here we have the general goods merchant of this particular hub. You can repair your gear. I wouldn't bother at this level. Um, anything that says this item cannot be deconstructed, you can safely sell. You want to buy a bag here. And throw it in that slot. Not that I'm terribly, terribly concerned about inventory at this point. And that's the same size bag. That's a bargain. We're gonna go over here and grab another quest. The scroll it represents a diplomacy quest. So we're gonna pick up just that initial diplomacy quest right now. And I wanna say back here there is another guy who can train me in harvesting, which is something that we will get into right now pretty much if I can find the guy I can never remember where this dude is for some reason I know he's right around here because there's people harvesting right around here Maybe it was on the other side of the village. Shadow passing over everything, by the way, was uh, a guy on a flying mount, which you can uh, rent down here. Um, I think this is the uh, res point. So this is where I stumble around like a jackass looking for the harvesting trainer. Maybe we'll get to that in a different video. For now, let's uh, let's go run this uh, this dude down in the swamp. Hmm. Crafting diplomacy. Um, and even harvesting, really, uh, all have uh, some addition, some notable additional wrinkles to them in Vanguard. That uh, actually, let's find. Uh, let's go to adventuring quests. This is the guy we want to find. That other quest was the diplomacy quest, and that actually sends me to the next quest hub, where you actually start to do those crafting and diplomacy quests. Swimming is a little flaky looking in Vanguard. You can see that uh, only now uh, am I uh, starting to see the water effects. It's it's one of the places in the game where the uh, where the graphics are are pretty clearly not quite up to modern standards. But there are other places in the game too. In, in, in fact, I would say that in the majority of the game where the graphics are more than enough up to modern standards. You know, I think I'm missing a quest, to be honest. That I could have grabbed back at the quest hub. Grab those two. And then actually we're going to run back to Tentry's village because I'm quite positive that I'm missing something. And that, that, that was, a, I think, a trip of, you know, from here to here within this chunk. Um, so it was maybe a quarter or a fifth of the way across the chunk, and it, it took a moment to get there. So the, the chunks are fairly big, and there's a lot of them, as you can see if we look at Thestra, for example, where there's just a ton of them. 
So I, I cannot possibly overstate the the scope of the world in this game. Um, it's one of the game's great strengths, and it's the kind of uh, MMO world that nobody seems to be particularly interested in making anymore. Also, the environmental uh, effects like the fog and such, uh, it's kind of hard to tell here, but uh, are, are pretty decent in the game. And the clouds. Um, we have... I've got them turned on. I, I refuse to play with volumetric clouds turned off. There is a layer of volumetric clouds that actually moves around up in the sky. And uh, storms and weather patterns actually... Um, move around the world too. There are actual entities that move around. So let's uh, let's look around here, because I'm I'm pretty sure there's another quest. Unless they've made a change, which is not uh, not impossible at all. But I believe this particular quest is actually the uh, kind of centerpiece quest for the getting you into the Isle of Dawn storyline. Let's look at the two quests that I've got. These folks over here are um, the, the various trainers. Do you seek wisdom? Not sure why I felt the need to do that, to be honest. One of the uh, other things about Vanguard is the vast majority of, I can click on this door, the vast majority of buildings in the game can be entered. You can go in and look around. And sometimes there's stuff in here. Here's some, uh, some vendors, for example. Uh, neither of which is of any particular use or interest to me at the moment, since this is not, uh, certainly not at this level, this is not a gear-oriented class particularly. Where's our fine? So we can do a gear upgrade at this point, but I don't, I don't see any particular reason to, to be honest. We'll buy one of those, just because. So I'm, I'm not, uh, I don't have anything in that slot at the moment. It's a waste armor. Alright, well, if there's another quest, I haven't found it, so let's go back and kill some... Looks like Guitaro Divers, Hobgoblin Overseers, and Dark Hide Crocodiles.
these items are on an individual cool these abilities I should say are on an individual cooldown. Blood Mage is one of uh, Vanguard's classes that is relatively soloable. Um, you're you're not, frankly, if, if you're only playing solo, you're frankly not going to get the most out of Vanguard. I think it's still got some some things that make it a cool game, uh, even if you are playing solo. However, it's definitely a group-oriented game with group-oriented content. Um, that said. The Blood Mage is one of the more solo-friendly classes in the game. He is uh, very durable, relatively speaking. I shouldn't say durable, I should say he has abilities that, uh, that keep him alive, where a less soloable class would uh, end up dead. Things such as health stealing, for example. And the more I use, the more... Um, Blood Union I get on an opponent, of course, the more health I can steal. I do need these Guitaro Divers, actually. So, let's kill. Ooh, over here we have a named... a named mob. Now these guys, uh, there's a couple of them down in this particular area, and these guys are not particularly noteworthy for what they drop, but this guy's got a shot at dropping something, so... Uh... Not a terribly bad drop, actually. Um, not something that's really useful to this character, but... Stat-wise. neither was that uh, other thing that just dropped. You can see I'm not terribly concerned about uh, mana at this level. That, uh, that does become something that you have to have to manage relatively carefully later on in the game. Got all of our crocodiles taken care of. We need to get more of these Guitaro divers. There is a Guitaro mount in the marketplace. If you want one of these weird lizard, frog, chicken type, whatever the hell these things are even supposed to be. Lizard, frog, chicken, fish things. It's actually not a mount I've actually seen in the game, either, actually. I have seen a couple of uh, what I presume to be store mounts floating around since the, uh, go to, go to, since the uh, free-to-play launch, though, so we need two more. Okay, so I'm, I'm being fairly wasteful about it, but uh, that, uh, that particular mob did take four spells to knock down. I think I get some food to start with, too. Are any of these worth equipping? This, I will... Yeah, sure. I'm not, it's not like I'm going to put it on the broker. That'd be kind of a waste of time for a level two item. So I'll just put it on and sell it to a vendor later. It's not something I'm terribly concerned about. Contrary to the initial announcement, free accounts do have broker access in Vanguard. So we've got that quest complete. Now you got to go find some more of these hobgoblins. They're floating around this area somewhere. We can turn the tracker on. Uh, that doesn't give me a tracker to hobgoblins. But they are floating around. We'll find them. So this gives us new masks. We'll 
go with the Vitality and Wisdom mask. So I, I needn't have bothered equipping that thing since I'm replacing it right now. And that goes in the face slot. Red mob names, by the way, mean that they're aggro mobs. Which I think uh, more than likely everybody watching this video probably realized. These put a magical cookie, something I want to hang on to. Because that uh, is a random drop on the Isle of Dawn, and it actually uh, will let me unlock one of the hidden quests later. Some more hobgoblins over here. And I see there's a couple players already killing them. That's okay. There's, there's there's more mobs to kill. With Vanguard being completely open world, what used to get called kill stealing uh, before, like uh, the dawn of of the expectation that. MMO play was largely an instanced experience. Um, uh, there are, you know, you do have to sometimes compete for quest items or or uh, or kills or what have you, uh, and that applies in dungeons to all the Vanguard, uh, all the Vanguard dungeons, with one exception, uh, that is a late game raid. Uh, are open world as well, so you may well encounter other. Players and or parties in those dungeons. Nobody's really tried to group with me um, here on the Isle of Dawn. Uh, however, uh, going in on higher level characters, there's just no real need to group at this level on the Isle of Dawn. Um, and indeed, in, in really any of the remaining starter areas. Uh, but there are actually um, some dungeons that uh, I'm not that are really quite low level dungeons that I am not necessarily vastly under leveled for at this point. There's a, a, a Rindal storehouse, for example, which is in the halfling, the old halfling starter zone, uh, which is I think level four to seven dungeons. So you you can get into and not, not that that's a, an unsoloable experience. Uh, for the most part, uh, the the low level dungeons are soloable at least to some extent. So click on that, and we have to find the missing piece in the of the tablet, and that is over here. And here's where you can tell I've gone through this before on this corpse. We're definitely seeing some lag right here. I'm pulling in somewhere between I'll search the other one here. Somewhere between 20 and 30 frames per second. Again, I'm filming, which is a factor. So we need to take the shard. And then we need to take it back over here and something interesting will happen. As I leap out of the water, click here, put the shard back, and then I feel my very life draining away. And then I actually die and am restored here, where this uh, NPC will cast a res on me. Let me show you what I know. Go with honor. And we'll go talk to my trainer because we have actually gained a level here. You are not ready. Back later. I get a couple of interesting uh, abilities at level six, but I don't really have anything right now. So we keep the cookie. 
Anything else we can get rid of? That is a six slot bag, which is bigger than the four slot bag that I apparently wasted money on earlier. So we will equip that. I haven't run into any real inventory problems. And honestly, on the Isle of Dawn, I really won't. Uh, this is a no-sell, because that's the initial thing I started with, so we'll throw that away. Sell this, sell that. Uh, this is fish, which I think I got as a quest reward. We'll keep that, just in case. Don't really need to be using food at this level, either, to be honest. Like I said, it, it's, it's really at level 10 plus that Vanguard starts to sing. Okay, so we need to go talk to... Veteran Sixfish, who's over here. He's the guy who gave us some quests before. Have you found your path? And he'll give us a belt, which of course is another item I just bought. This uh, this item is important, by the way. So don't accidentally throw that away once you get it. Uh, definitely a better belt than I'm currently wearing. And I have a, another letter for another NPC who's down the road a bit. Okay, so we need to rendezvous with this other NPC, which I believe we will find is in... Oops, let's go to the Isle of Dawn map. Which I believe we will find is in the other quest hub, the next quest hub. So we'll head out there. And then we will probably end this particular video because we will have pretty thoroughly done everything there is to do in the initial quest hub. We've grabbed, uh, we remember that we have grabbed a crafting and diplomacy quest each as well. Uh, we have managed to not train harvesting. But let me take a quick look around here. Here is another crafting quest. take a look at and crafting quests aren't showing here uh, because I have them turned off in the tracker Let's see where that guy is so I'm looking for Kamashi Sunrain Gives me a, a diplomacy item. That guy is probably in the next quest hub too, to be honest. Take one quick more one more quick look around here to make sure that I haven't missed anything. Like I said before, there's it has been a little while since I've been through here, so it's not uh, at all ridiculous to think that I might be missing something. I talked to this guy oh, yeah. already. I did. I don't object to just letting you listen to the the music. The game has great music. I 
A lot of which is available on YouTube, by the way, if you run down Vanguard Saga, if you're a soundtrack, you'll see that there's quite a bit of uh, Vanguard music available. Rendezvous with the invisible hey, girl here. Traveler? I forget whether... Uh, She is stealthed well. or a ghost. She looks like uh, she looks like she's stealthed. Hmm. So we actually have an additional quest to do up here. Um, in Geis Nusa, which is this little area up here. So. Take a look at that. Yep, this village. And we could whoops, we got jumped here. I'm not entirely sure why these two uh, hobgoblins are considered guards. rescue these dudes. We'll get us to the next... My objective for this video is to get us to the next quest hub, which we are not quite at. Somebody else is killing that guy. Mysterious device, which we will now examine. And we have to kill some more hobgoblins now, and I think we have enough villagers rescued. So the. Uh, oh, what's that? Okay, so we got a whole bunch of stuff, including some stale nuts. Who doesn't need some stale nuts? These guys are a little tougher, so I'm I am definitely using Blood Union to my advantage here. You can see that it'll pop up here as I uh, continue to stack Blood Union on the guy. This is the first part of the Isle of Dawn where there are actual aggro mobs. There's those uh, named mobs out in the swamp that you do uh, you do get a couple of, but for the most part, other than those, those are random spawns too, so they're they're not necessarily out at all times. Movement debuff is not tremendously useful for the power level uh, for, for this particular type of encounter. Okay, so that's that. One more. Is that a root? It is a root, actually. Okay, so it's more 60% chance to break on hit. But it's broken pretty much 100% of the time, as far as I can tell. So that's level 5. And we can exit Dice Nusa.
What do we need to do? What do we need to do for this quest? Okay. We need to bring uh, bring it to this chick. Did you dream well last night? And then we need to go back up and close those portals. If there's nobody in this zone, by the way, this is kind of a pain in the ass because there there's enough mobs that are aggro mobs that you can fairly easily get uh, more on you than you would like. Uh, but there's quite a few people rolling around right now, too. Not too many, I would say. I would say there's a, there's a very nice number. Of, uh, of other players in this area at the moment. You can leave the Isle of Dawn more or less as soon as you finish uh, the adventuring quest line, but uh, there will be some grouping that's, that's, uh, that's needed later on. And you don't have to finish the crafting or uh, diplomacy quest lines, but I recommend that you do because they will enhance your ability to get uh, they will give you some good rewards for those spheres, and they will enhance your ability to enjoy those spheres once you get off the island. So we'll close that portal. And then we will try and find another portal. I want to say they went in relatively recently and added portals here. Oh, here's a named. Unlike certain games, these named guys aren't necessarily, uh, you know, tied to a quest. There's, there's just mobs that are named mobs that are just out in the world to be interesting. Oh, and he's dropped a six-slot bag, which I can't use. And a crossbow, which might be useful, but... Uh, not to my character. What these guys don't seem to do down here is group aggro. But that does happen in uh, a later part of the Isle of Dawn. Like I said, uh, there's there's definitely stuff on the Isle of Dawn in the context of the level one to ten experience that you do want to group for. Now there is a final dungeon, which is a, a really kind of large and and uh, intricate um, dungeon that you you hit a level nine or ten. Uh, that's kind of the capstone to the Isle of Dawn experience. Um, and if you're doing the diplomacy and crafting quest lines, they also finish up in that dungeon. Take advantage of this NPC that has foolishly decided to uh, air that mob for me. He'll kill the mob too. Why not? There's another feature of Vanguard, and I, and I said feature on purpose, uh, bec that uh, that I appreciate. Um, that for a while seemed to be kind of an unusual approach in MMOs, and that is that grinding. The, the classical idea of grinding, where you are advancing your character by just killing mobs, um, is is not only not impossible in Vanguard, but there's no reason not to do it. Now, for a while in EverQuest 2, for example, uh, you could very easily gimp your character by not completing quests because you didn't get AA experience for them. Uh, there is currently no AA system in Vanguard, however, there is some ability to customize your character built into the game, and that kind of takes effect at level 10, too. So that's something that we'll talk about eventually, but not at the moment. Okay, now we are going to accept this quest. We seem to be getting hitched here. I'm 
pleased with your work. Yeah, we're here. We have another one here. Those are both quests. Interestingly, I don't seem to have this quest. Smells like a bug to me. See Miss Guide you. We'll abandon this one. Do you need work? Has it been a good year for you? All right, we'll come back down here, and I will take you up to the village. Which is where a bunch of interesting things happen. You can start getting into crafting and diplomacy here, for example. And there's more vendors, more trainers, that kind of business as well. As you're, I'm guessing, aware... Uh, Vanguard is a game that had kind of a, a legendarily rotten launch, but uh, has really, really improved since then. Ah, here's my harvesting instructor. Let's so pick up that quest. We are not going to pursue it right now. Our next, uh, well, if it's just a turn in, uh, we'll leave it. We'll leave it alive for now. Um, I like to do that until I'm ready to tackle it, so that I uh, don't forget about it. So we'll leave it where it is. Head back down here to see if this uh, other quest issue has cleared itself up, which I kind of feel like it might have. Currently, I am level five in the second quest hub. So we're just gonna head down here. I'm gonna see if I, what I need to do to pick this quest up. I may uh, just try to log and, and do it that way. Um, it's not something that's happened to me before. It looked like it was just uh, it just hitched for some reason. So uh, if not, I'll, I'll petition it if I have to. But uh, in the meantime, oh, and we have a civic diplomacy buff, by the way. That's something we'll get into. We have this plus 25 to harvesting and uh, both general and uh, and specific harvesting skills. So, in any event, uh, we are going to sign off this video for now. We will be back with another video from the Aladon where we're going to pick up pretty much where we left off. It's going to actually be a different character, but he's going to be the same character, if you know what I mean. So, I hope you've enjoyed watching this rather lengthy exploration of Vanguard Saga of Heroes gameplay. The game is free to play now. You should check it out. By all means, I recommend it. Uh, it's got a lot to recommend it, even though it's uh, it's not a what you would call a state-of-the-art game, uh, but it's got a game that has a lot of charming features from the previous eras of MMOs. Down in the description below, you will find a link to my website at ardwolfslayer.wordpress.com, so check that out. By all means, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We have more videos coming, and also below you will see a link, or, or a set of links, I should say, to follow me on Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. So do that as well. Uh, thanks for watching very much, and I will see you next time.